All right, hey there, rock stars. Sarah Rock and Robbins here. I want to welcome you all to the Rockstar Recruiting School Live. I am the author of the best selling book, Rock Your Network Marketing Business, and the creator of my success series for network marketing. The Rockstar Recruiting School, which by the way, gives you awesome scripts, ideas to power prospect, present, and so much more. And my new one for leaders, the Masterclass Edition, all of which you can find on sarahrobbins.com. Um, for those of you that are watching on our Facebook uh, streaming, I would love to hear who you are, where you're tuning in from. And... Um, We'll go ahead here and we'll get started and share with you just a few topics and things that have been on my heart, talking about how we built a billion dollar sales team and our powerful profession of network marketing, best gig on the planet. By the age of 29 years old, I was a six figure per month income earner in our profession. Now, let me just say, I didn't imagine doing that in a year, much less than a month. Um, I then went on to build five more fabulous years and our team went on to do over a billion dollars in incredible sales, um, by the way, in a year. And um, it has just been amazing to see the lives that have been changed all across the globe through network marketing. Um, but you know, here's the truth. Here's the here's here's the the story. My story really is a story of struggle. It's a story of hope. It's a story of hustle. And I tell you what, it's a story of heart, of of hunger. And um, I want to share a little bit about the behind the scenes with you guys today because I got to thinking as we our company celebrated officially ten years, but I've been in our company for eleven in our pre launch phase. I was thinking about really how we got here and what we did, and I was thinking about. The trials, I was thinking of the triumphs, I was thinking of the funny stories, and really what got us to where we are today. You know, success was not always easy for me. I tell people that I quit more than anybody else in the company. The president, the former president of our company always reminds me of that, by the way. She's like, you quit more than anybody else. I remember one day calling her on a ski lift and telling her, I don't think this is for me. I think I'm going to quit. Can you imagine? I was only in my 20s though, guys, so don't judge, okay? I would never call the president of a company today and say something crazy like that. Um, it took me three months to recruit our first distributor. I think I was the least highest earner in the company for quite a while, went on from being the least highest to being the top earner. And um, man, I just really lacked self-assurance. It, it was a challenge. I was young, I was shy, I was broke. My network was young and broke like me. So it's easy, you know, needless to say, success did not come easy. So again, people are always asking me, how? How did you do it then? It was hope. It was hustle, and I tell you what, it was hunger. And of course, heart, just you know, loving what I do, loving people every single step of the way. But the first thing that I wanna to focus to, uh, on today, you know, because people say, oh my gosh, you know, our team did a billion dollars in sales last year, projections to double that for this year, just in a year, you guys, just in North America, which is pretty crazy to me. We haven't even launched yet all across the globe. And people look at this shy, formerly shy, young, broke kindergarten teacher with no experience doing anything like this. I was in my 20s, and with everything I told you today, you'd probably think she wouldn't stand a chance. How in the heck did they do it? So I'm gonna share with you, it first started with hope. When I started my business, um, I interviewed against 1,100 people, 1,100 people to get my teaching job. Now, I live in Metro Detroit, so Motown, Motor City, okay, cool place to live, but let me just tell you, when the crash of the automotive industry hit, right, when the downturn of the economy happened, so many families were moving. Guys, the little house that we lived on, which you probably saw that we gifted it to somebody recently, to a family in need, our very first home. We drove by it the other day. It was super cool to see. Um, but when the downturn of the economy happened, I remember driving up and down that street and pretty much every single house you know, around us was up for foreclosure. I mean, it was crazy. People were moving. Um, Therefore, schools in Michigan were just straight up shutting down and there were so many teachers that were facing layoffs. So here I am, brand new teacher on the totem pole, right? I'm on the lowest end of the totem pole. I've got no seniority. Um, teaching is one of those jobs, it's not based on performance, it's based on seniority and teacher tenure and all those things, which can be good and it can also be bad in some cases too. 
And um, I remember going into the school cafeteria thinking, oh my gosh, I mean, literally, it was every day I'd sit there and there'd be another article up on the whiteboard um, about layoffs and all the teachers were talking about it. And of course, you know, I'm sitting there going, well, I'm gonna be the first to go. And I just remember there every day just sitting with that pit in my stomach and I was thinking, oh my God, you know, what am I gonna do? Now, first and foremost, the first thing that I did was I blocked negativity. I mean, I left that teacher's lounge. I ate lunch in my car many a times, which you'll hear later. I actually ended up doing my um, network marketing business and part-time hours over my lunch time. Um, I would just bring my work in my car and I'd do my work there. And if that's really how I started building my business, very part-time hours in my car on my lunch hour because I wanted to drown out the negativity and do something positive. But here's the thing, that created in me hope. I wanted hope for something more. And so I started just um, really, uh, you know, looking for other opportunities. And I thought, you know what, if nothing else, if nothing else, I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna put my family in the street here. This house is not going up for foreclosure, right? You think about today, 10 years later, we wouldn't have been able to gift that house if I would have just said, oh man, things aren't going good. I just, I quit. I quit on life and I just quit on, you know, having hope. And so instead that propelled me to hope for more, to look for more, to dream for more. And instead of being a victim of my circumstance, I decided, you know what, that's it. I'm getting out there. I'm gonna find another opportunity. Should I lose my job, I wanna have some extra money in the bank. And I tell you what, I started to really hustle. I was taking on all sorts of side jobs. I was babysitting, I was nannying, I was freelancing for different skincare companies. At the time, I knew nothing about skincare. I didn't have any background in skincare, but I tell you what, I was like, well, pays pretty good hourly. I'm gonna just, you know, save some money. I'm gonna take on a bunch of extra work. And I worked around the clock. Here's the coolest thing. It's like God knew, right? He knew. And ultimately, he's the author of our story. I love when people say, you know, we make plans, God laughs. So here I am going, okay, I'm just going to make some extra money in case I lost my job. And so um, one of the companies that I was freelancing for, I, um, you know, just started to do some work for them and had worked for them over the months. I got a call one day that would change my life. They let me know. Good news and bad news. Bad news is you're going to lose your job which wasn't my teaching job, it was my freelancing job. But the good news is we have another opportunity for you. We're leaving retail, we're going into direct sales. We know, you know, this online world, it's the social economy, who you know, what they recommend is more influential now than ever before. They had built a billion dollar business in traditional sales using infomercials, but they looked at today's time and said, network marketing is a way to go. We're gonna do it again, we're gonna build another billion dollar brand, and they did, but we're gonna do it via network marketing, the social economy. And so they gave us the opportunity. And I just remember thinking, I'm not a salesperson. I don't really know anything about skincare, but here's the thing that I do know. I need money. I need $3,000 a month. Should I lose my teaching job? And man, I was reading stories of people who were able to earn career-based incomes. You know, that was my own unique story. Those results aren't typical, right? But there's so many people who are able to earn an extra side income, a primary income, a career-based income, and able to build a certain level of success, right? Working hard through our profession. And so I really became a student of the profession and I started studying. And here's the key thing I want you to hear. I started studying. In my off hours, I was studying how successful people did it through reading books. By the way, if you don't have mine, make sure you pick it up. This is my entire system here. If you want more advanced training, this is everything that I do to you know train my teams and the people that I recruit. Um, but I became a student of the profession. I started reading the stories, being inspired by them first and foremost. But then every single day, you know, my drive time was a rolling university. I would listen to CDs at the time. Now it's podcasts, right? Or MP3s. Um, when I was in my car, if I didn't have calls to make, I was reading the books. And I thought, you know what? If these people, if they can be successful, then you know what? So can I. Um, shout out to our Jonak who's on my first um, event that was really life-changing for me in the profession outside of my company event, which by the way, I never miss a convention. I've not missed a convention for my company in 11 years. That that's where decisions are made. That's where leaders step up to the plate. But then I went to a generic event called the Mastermind event. And um, I went and I was just, you know, probably sitting in one of the back rows, listening, learning. 
Um, and I heard all of these pre pre presenters just sharing a story. Um, by the way, people are saying where you get your books and CDs. It's sarahrobbins.com. Sarah with an H, Robbins, two Bs.com. There's all sorts of cool free resources there too. Um, so, you know, I started hearing the stories. I started hearing the best practices and I thought, if they can do it in their respective companies, so can I, but I've got to figure out how. Here's the problem, you guys. I mean, you talk about all odds being stacked against me at the time. Our company was so new. We didn't have training yet. We did not have a compensation plan yet. We didn't have any trainers. I mean, absolutely nothing. But what I had, what I had, I had hope. I had hunger. I had passion, right? I was hungry for more in my life. So what I did was I took that hunger. I took that passion. I took our products and I started sharing them with everybody with skin, right? Everybody, really. And I thought, it's really a numbers game. I've just got to get this in front of enough people. I've got to get this in front of enough people and eventually I can build the success story too. But I became a student of the profession. I read the books. I listened to the materials over and over again, literally until it became second nature to me. Thank you for those that are posting the website. By the way, thank you to all of you that are sharing this on your team pages too. If you want this to go live into your team page, just click the share button right now. I see a lot of you are doing that. This will definitely, this talk is gonna inspire. It doesn't matter what team, what company, this will inspire the rock stars on your team, I promise. Because they're gonna look and see my story and where I was in my company when I started, like if she can do it, well, we can all do it too. And I'm telling you, it was those inspiring stories at that mastermind event that I first went to. That is what propelled me to be a top leader in my company was to see there's top leaders in other companies. If they could do it, I could do it too. Okay. So I always had hope. I would fixate on making that $3,000 a month and I knew I was not going to quit until I achieved that first goal. Now, obviously, as my income grew, so did some of the goals. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. So... If you find yourself in a place where you are just emotionally all over the place in your business and you can't quite stick with it, the first thing that I have to ask yourself self is, what are you hoping for? What are you hoping for? If you're easily discouraged by a no or when somebody quits, you want to quit, you need to go back to the reason why you're doing this in the very first place. I tell you what, I was so focused on making that $3,000, I wasn't going to quit until I got there. Now, sometimes it stung, sometimes it hurt. I tell you what, there was times that I cry. I remember falling short on a goal and literally crying on my leather sofa in my old uh, home and laying in my pool of tears on leather because it doesn't absorb in, okay? I had those moments, but I tell you what, it wasn't allowed, disappointment wasn't going to defeat me. When you think about this, disappointments are temporary. Disappointments are tempor uh, temporary, but quitting, it's forever, right? So instead of being um, uh, turned off, right, by all of my disappointments, I was going to continue to be driven by my dream, my reason why, why I was doing it in the very first place. Um, that really helps you to process the no's, the disappointment, the rejection, all of those things, really that any entrepreneur in any business is going to face. But remember, the rewards are so worth it. You guys always hear me say, I can do anything for a short period of time for the long-term freedom that I desire and that my family deserves. Now, the second thing is, was I always hustled. I always hustled. Now I tell you, this has just been true of me since I was a little girl. Like A minus was too close to a B. So I always worked really hard. I kid you not when I say I was young and people were like, oh, I'm going to become a babysitter. I was like, hmm, if I got like 10 kids in a camp, I could get paid times 10 for an hour worth of work and I would do summer babysitting clinics. And I tell you what, I was hustling. I was passing out flyers to every single uh, family in the neighborhood and I was creating these summer sitting clinics. Uh, when I had a job, I was always working multiple side jobs because I always had a desire to do so much more. I've always been a really hard worker. So I wanted to just share with you some of the funny stories um, and ways that I found prospects you know, to build a billion dollar sales team. Um, so I remember in the beginning, I mean, I, I, of course, you know, the first thing that I did, you exhaust your list, you talk to everybody, you talk to everybody with skin, right? And I talked to people and I followed up with them and I asked for referrals and I remember like just taking a deep breath, hitting the send button sometimes or picking up the phone, feeling like I was going to die. The good news is I have yet to die doing this business, 
but I did exactly what I was asked. I was always, always coachable. I would listen to the trainings. I'd invest in my success. I would do the things that I was being asked to do. And I knew that there was no shortcuts. There was no shortcut to success, but I tell you what, I wasn't gonna quit till I made that $3,000, okay? Um, my friend and I, way, way back in the day, we used to place ads. This was before like, you know, we had any policies and procedures or anything, but we would place ads for what we were doing like back in the day. And, um, and again, I just want to say like, you know, some of these things worked, some didn't. And so I'm going to recommend again, that you get my book to find out what really worked. Um, but we place ads back in the day. Shout out to Tracy. <laughs> We place these ads and I remember just getting this little room that we rented at a hotel and we did interviews with people. I remember we were sitting across from this guy and he was fidgeting the whole time and he started to get this weird look in his eye and we like thought, oh my God, you know, at some point he's going to pull out a gun. And uh, we were really actually at one point scared. I'm jabbing her under the table. She's jabbing me. And all of a sudden the guy goes, just stop. And we're like, what? And he said, I have got to go to the bathroom and I've had to go this entire time. He goes, literally, you, got, you girls just keep talking. I gotta go. And literally he ran, he went to the bathroom, he came back and we were just laughing so hard, like nervously, because we thought we were gonna get shot because the guy was fidgeting and going crazy and had this really intense look in his eyes. You know that feeling when you gotta go, right? Then the next guy who comes in, We'll just call him Johnny, but his last name was Temple, okay? And so the guy's talking to us, and, you know, we're having a great conversation, super nice guy, but I keep seeing something white out of the corner of my eye. She keeps seeing something white out of the corner of hers. It's flashing around, and, I mean, we're so distracted. We're trying to figure out, you know, what the heck is going on, and we just see it's a big old wad of tissue, like a, you know, like you popped a zit and you put tissue on top, um, a big old lot of tissue he forgot about, poor guy. Nice guy. Um, so we renamed him Johnny Tissue Temple because he had a big old tissue on his temple. I mean, you guys, the funniest things, like you name it, I did it. So the thing is, like when people like think they know my story and they think they know how I became successful and they think I just got lucky, guys, I was sitting in Arizona in 100 plus degree boardrooms that we rented out doing ads, talking to people. And I tell you what, um, we did the hard work. We did the hard work. Um, we did events. Guys, I've probably eaten more cheese and crackers to make an entire community constipated, okay? I remember sitting on somebody's um, chair and there was so much, I mean, I, I, I love animals. I have a dog myself, but I think the person had probably too many cats, maybe it was a cat hoarder. And the sofa was literally, it looked like a first sofa. I thought it was a first sofa. I had no idea, it was just covered in white. And I sat down and I got up and all of a sudden, like I looked the back of my pants, it looked like I had white fur pants. I mean, I just sat in piles and piles of cat hair, okay? <laughs> I did events, I hosted events. Even when I had the smallest network ever, the smallest network, network ever. By the way, today I live in one of the smallest cities in my state, if not the smallest, okay? But when I would do these events, I'd invite the same people and I would just change up the theme. January, I did New Year, New You. February, love the skin you're in. And we did a little fondue and facials. March, because it was a month of luck, I did friends, family, customer appreciation. I pounded the pavements, I hit the ground and running, okay? By the way, that fondue and facials, it was hilarious, you guys. I thought, well, we're gonna do facials on people because I'm in a skincare company. And um, I decided I would take this crock pot and I thought, oh, we'll just do this nice steamy like towels. And we got them wet and we rolled them up. Well, the biggest thing I learned that night was you don't put it on the high setting because all of a sudden, our, our uh, washcloths were burning. So we've had events that were a total flop. We had events that people never showed up. In fact, I hosted events for other people too. I started asking for referrals. My business is expanding in your area. Will you host an event for me? And we had a gal who hosted an event at a salon um, out in Ohio. I'll just leave it nameless for now, but nobody showed up. Nobody showed up. I drove from Michigan to Ohio hours and hours and hours and we're like where is everybody so it's my mom and I she was my she's my sponsor in business and we're like mm, okay well this is a huge flop and we go outside it's hot it's humid and there's dogs that literally are just running around everywhere and their owners were like what's going on it was the dog days of summer parade it was a doggy parade and people were more interested in the doggy parade than they were this event nobody showed up until until hear this 
Here's the thing, that's why you don't discount an event and you don't give a crappy presentation if one person shows up. At the very end, one gal walks in, put the product on her hand and she said, let's go to dinner, I wanna sign up. That person ended up being my first six-figure earner, now a seven-figure earner in the company, but she did that in a year and that was the person who catapulted my success. And I watched, you know, in the beginning, if you read my book, I talk about how it was all about product sales in the beginning, which was great because I could supplement my income, eventually match my teaching income just on product sales. But then I saw the power of prospecting and building a cheap team. My check went from 3,800 to over $11,000 a month with this one person because of her network in a few months when she joined my team. Okay, shout out to Natalia. She literally built a groundswell in her area doing coffee events, talking to her friends saying, hey, we're doing this again next week, bring your friends. We're doing this again next week, bring your friends. She built a huge business on the basics, simply having weekly meetings that people could plug into, events. That's why you don't discount the event where one person shows up because you don't know what they're going to do. You don't know who they're gonna lead you to, so you give the best darn presentation you ever have because you just never know. Um, I remember doing trade shows, you guys. <laughs> I would do these trade shows. I'd go online and I'm like, okay, they're, you know, the holidays, they would do the little events at schools and at churches. And I thought, well, you know what? For the price of $50, if I can sell one of my product regimens, I can make my money back. So goal is let's get at least a customer. But I would go and I would hustle. I would go early and bring samples and I would talk to other vendors because I thought they're entrepreneurial. They know other people in direct sales because they're here with other people in direct sales. I would go early, I would stay late, I would make friendships, um, I would always have some sort of um, item to pull people. I had learned that in the retail setting when I used to freelance. I would have a raffle. So let's say, for example, I'm raffling off an eye cream. That would be the thing that I would pull people to bring them in and I would say, hey, you know, um, I'm offering, I'm, I'm, I'm raffling off a free um, eye cream, no purchase necessary. Come on, check it out, you know, go ahead and fill out your information. Now, bingo. Now I had contact information, right? So I'm building my list, so to speak. Now I can talk to them. But here's the thing. I didn't stop there. I would say, oh, well, let me just make a quick recommendation for you. If you change one thing about your skin, what would it be? I didn't say, do you want to see our products? I didn't ask permission. I'd make a suggestion. Hey, you got to come check out the products. If you change one thing about your skin, what would it be? Then I would start engaging in the conversation. I'd always look for opportunities to weave in the opportunity to but I followed up. The fortune is in the follow-up. I would always use those forms, okay? So I remember doing events. Now, not all of the events were good either. Um, my mom was talking to me earlier today, by the way, we're on the phone. I was like, what are some of your funniest stories of network marketing? She goes, oh my God, Sarah, I remember this time that I did this event and I had no idea I was actually at a psychic fair because somebody on her team booked the event. She didn't know what it was. She just thought it was a generic trade show. She's like, all of a sudden, Sarah, it was the weirdest thing. Somebody's marching across the gym and they're beating a drum. And she was like, I was so freaked out. I literally just ran right out of there and she left. I mean, some of these stories are just funny, right? I mean, they're just funny, but we never gave up. The good thing is you gotta be able to laugh about it, right? But I look at the stories, for example, of one of the top leaders on our team, um, and well, I guess two of the top leaders on our team, I should say, a gal by the name of Sandy, who went to a trade show, passed out a sample to a gal that she thought would be great and she admired, who I think was either attending or hosting there. I, I don't know all the details of that part, but long story short, this gal had major influence in her community. She followed up on the sample and ended up saying, hey, you know what? I wanna join your team. So Sandy and Barbie, shout out to the both of you. But what an incredible, incredible story of success of how just one person from one event can totally change your business. And both of them, they ended up building a multi-million dollar business. Guys, I would go on forums back in the day, work at home mom boards, you know, whatever the case may be, and I'd start forming relationships. I would do that through um, networking groups too. Guys, I'm shy. I call my husband my wingman. I will like have him help start conversations because I'm like, I don't ever know what to say to people. I've since learned, give them a compliment, ask them a question. Just ask people a lot of questions. The number one thing they like to talk about is themselves. So talk to them about themselves, okay? And if you don't get to talk in your business at all, don't worry. Just at the end, pull out your smartphone and be like, hey, are you on Facebook? I'd love to stay in touch. You can talk to them later. Um, 
But I remember going to these networking events. I remember distinctly being in a parking lot in Ann Arbor, Michigan, going to my first networking event, and it was 90 degrees, and I'm literally just sweating through my clothes. I had a white shirt on, I had khaki pants. I thought I was looking cute, but I tell you what, I mean, I was like sweating out of every crevice, and I literally thought I was going to die. But again, I knew how to get in front of people, and I have yet to die still doing this business. Okay. Um, I remember lifestyle prospecting, you guys. You've heard the story of when I approached my first person, my very first person at a cosmetics counter, and I go to pick up the skincare, and my hands are shaking, and my knees are knocking, and for the first time in my life, I saw stars. I did the network marketing verbal vomit all over her. She looked at me like a deer in headlights. I was so embarrassed. I was like, that's it. I'm going back to my car. I'm calling my mom, and I called my mom, who's my sponsor, and I cried, and I was like, do I go back there? She was like, don't go back there. Get out of there. And I did the pedal to the metal. I cried Ooh, the whole way home, the ugly cry. And I wondered, how am I going to ever be successful doing this? I'm afraid to talk to people. Um, that's where I realized I had to go through a lot of personal growth, a lot of professional growth. I had to work on me. Um, I remember going to a prospecting meeting, you guys. My mom and I were laughing about this earlier. And we met these gals that I had met. And um, they were interested in the business. And we, they ask us to meet them at a restaurant. We're like, okay, well, little did we know. Like, we show up, they'd been drinking. Um, there was a fight night going on, which was crazy. So it's like four girls and a bunch of men and literally like a ring in the middle of this like Italian banquet center. And we like talk, we can't hear it all. The girls are like a little tipsy. They have no clue even what we're saying. So at the end, like trying to be like gracious, I'm like, you know what, we'll pay for the bill. I looked at the bill and it was like hundreds of dollars. I mean, I, I bet those girls have been there drinking all day long and they were just trying to get a free dinner, okay? And I looked at that and I looked at my mom at the time. I mean, I was just starting my business. I didn't have the money to pay for that. I'm like, oh my gosh, what do we do? We paid the bill, but we were like, never again. Guys, here's the thing. Some of the strategies work. Some of those strategies didn't, right? But the thing that I hope that you'll see through all of it was literally we hustled. I knew that this business required me to get out in front of people and I was going to be creative. I was going to be clever. I wasn't going to allow fear to set in, analysis, paralysis. I literally, I kind of paved my own way. I forged my own path. You don't know if you're going to meet your top earner at a Starbucks. You don't know if you're going to meet them um, at an event. You don't know where you're going to meet them. So here's the thing. Never discount an opportunity. You literally pull out your blueprint for success and say, where can I go to meet people that I can go and pass out some samples? I can go collect digits. I can forge and build relationships. That's the thing. It's all about getting out and going where the people are. When people are like, where do I find people? I'm like, are you serious? Where do you find people? We're surrounded by people, but you got to get out of your house and you have to go to where the people are. Your willing to has to be greater than your wanting to. Your willing to has to be greater than your wanting to. Again, some of these strategies work, some didn't, so I'm not saying any of them are you know, the, the main way to build your business, but I do suggest you get my book, Rock Your Network Marketing Business. Shameless plug, because there's no shame there, guys. Literally, people then started to ask. When they saw my success, by the way, was then asked to speak um, at the Mastermind event and have um, been a main stage speaker there. Um, people started to ask, do you have a book? I wanna see exactly how you did it. And some people, it's not, you know, where do I find people? They wanted to know what to say. So people would ask me all the time and I was like, I will not write a book to write a book. I'm just not. I will not write a book to write a book. And I kept saying over and over again, I'm not gonna write a book. I'm not gonna write, a nope, there's no way. I'm not writing a book. So I said, I'm, I wrote it off. I'm not writing a book. One day I was doing the summer series for my team. It was 12 weeks long. And here's exactly what I started to train my team on. I trained them on the chapters of my book. I talked about how to promote products. I talked about how to prospect. I talked about how to present, how to close, how, you know, when you get somebody started, how to start them successfully, how to duplicate, how to be a leader, so much more. And I looked and I was like, okay, I've got like 12 sections. I think I have a book. Again, no intention to write a book. I call the people to my websites and I'm like, I need to write a book. What do I do? And they're like, oh, well, first you do this, that, and the other. I was like, no, no, no. I already read it. I simply need somebody to proofread it and to make me a cover. 
Guys, back in the day, I didn't even know what I was doing. It's so funny when people think, I, I got invited, by the way, I'm gonna tell about this on next week. I got invited to speak on some like internet marketing thing about how I built a business online. I'm like, I'm not your gal. It would have been a great opportunity, but I'm not your gal because I didn't do it with strategy. I like nobody coached me. I've not taken one online course, not one on how to do internet marketing or network marketing, nothing. All of this was literally like going out and doing the do. I just did it. I just did it. I didn't sit there behind a computer and wait and wait and wait. I was just like, I'm going to get out in front of people and start talking to people. So I didn't even know what I was doing. But I just decided, you know what? I'm going to do this like little webinar. It was my social media one, by the way. If you um, you can Google it. It's still great. It's great. I'm going to give you some an updated one, by the way, because so many of you people have asked now that social media has changed. So if you haven't, by the way, subscribe to my newsletter. I'm not talking about my team newsletter. Subscribe to my generic training newsletter at sarahrobbins.com. If you um, enter in your name and email, you'll get a free video, Demystifying the Big Build, which is my most popular keynote talk. Companies have paid me money to speak and deliver this keynote, but you can get it for free. Okay. It's my most popular talk. Um, but anyways, so, um, I, okay. So let me go back, subscribe to my newsletter so you can be notified when I do the social media training. But if you Google social media summit, Sarah Robbins, social media summit, part one, you'll see, um, not only great social media training, that's also free, but at the end, um, I just said, Hey, I happen to have a book. I had no strategy, guys. Literally, nobody told me to do that. I didn't ask anybody, how should I do this? I just simply was like, oh, by the way, I wrote this book, like super excited. But, you know, you can get it on Amazon and um, became a number one, number one bestseller the day it launched. And it's been a bestseller ever since over the past five years. By the way, we have exciting things coming surrounding the book. If you're subscribed to my newsletter at sarahrobbins.com, you're going to find out what it is literally within the next few days to the next week. It's so exciting, you guys. It's going to blow your mind. It's exciting. So anyway, so then ended up writing a best-selling book. From there, you guys, a whole world of opportunities was open for us. We... Um, built four successful brands and businesses. We have a publishing company. We um, have a real estate company. We have a speaking and training company. We've got our network marketing company and several ministries too. And um, actually next week, I'm gonna share with you how we built our generic brand. So if you know any entrepreneurs, they don't have to be in network marketing, who want to know literally how they can rock their brand and build successful businesses, whether traditionally or online, tell them to be sure that they like this Facebook page, Sarah Robbins Network Marketing Professional, because next week on Monday, I'm gonna go live and share how I rocked it and how we built four successful global businesses and brands, again, doing over a billion dollars in sales collectively last year, through all four of those companies. And I tell you what, um, it's gonna be a good one. It's gonna be exciting. So here's the thing, but if you're in one of those people and you're thinking, you know what? I'm interested in building a successful network marketing company. I'm gonna tell you, the smartest business of all of our business is this one. Here's why. Because I don't trade hours for dollars. This business is about leverage. It's leveraging a team of people, almost like pseudo franchising, right? It's all about leveraging. Um, I don't have a brick and mortar building. I don't have employees for this business. We do for our other businesses. We don't have a brick and mortar shop, low overhead, no risk. You're profitable right away. And where else could a formerly shy teacher in her 20s compress a 30 to 50 year career into three to five and earn royalty income, guys, residual income. I want you to think about that. It's very hard to find royalty or residual income. I mean, I can't do that in, in a lot of you know our other businesses here, but I want you to think about, well, with you know book sales, people are reordering, the teams are growing, whatever, but I still promote it. So royalty income, residual income, let's talk about this. Where do you earn it? Well, maybe you're an athlete and you get an endorsement. Maybe you write a hit song and it plays on the um, radio over and over again. But in network marketing, you have the opportunity to earn residual income on the sales, the repeat sales of not only you, but your team as they reorder throughout the years. It is one of the smartest business models on the planet today. And if I had to recreate my wealth, hands down, if I had to do it again, I would do it in network marketing. It is so simple, it is scalable, it is smart. So here's the thing. Now I'm gonna say, if you're in a company, you stick with it, okay? Because you don't need a new opportunity, you just need a new commitment to your opportunity. What you need to do 
Go back. Where's your hope? What are you hoping for? What are some of your goals? Are you willing to hustle? I tell you, the ways that I found all of my top leaders in this book, not only how I found them, but what I said to them, there's scripts and language in the book. And then you've got hunger. You know, what keeps you going? What keeps you up at night? For me now, today, I've got that hunger. I've got that drive. It's because we build orphanages overseas for kids in need. And we don't just give, we go. And I sit and go, man, if I can write a six-figure check to build a home, I want to do that again and again and again and again. We give more than my husband and I both used to make when he owned a successful real estate company and when I was teaching and working all of these other jobs too. I mean, it's incredible. So as your, as your income grows, so will the impact that you're able to make on other people's lives. That's why I don't quit. That's why we opened several companies because we look and we say there's so much more value. There's so much more that we can do. There's so much more that we can give. Um, I then hold myself up in my office one day and I was like, that's it. <laughs> I'm putting my whole system down. Um, I'm going to walk people through. If you want to hear my voice and you want to hear me walking through a specific system from start all the way through duplicating a large organization, I created these CDs. There's going to be more exciting announcements coming um, for um, these products as well. So stay tuned. Um, but for now, you can get great uh, deals when you purchase them as a package on my site at sarahrobbins.com. Then I decided, you know what? I'm going to teach people how to be a leader. You're at that level where you want to lead. Let's talk about leading. Guys, if you saw the other day on my Facebook page, I was highlighting my book. I was rereading it again. I am out to 10x my business, my network marketing business this year. So get ready. Don't just watch me. Join me. Commit that this is your year, guys, that you rock your network marketing business. You become a student of your profession. You find the most successful people in your field. You follow them. You watch them. You shadow them. And here's the thing. Then you put in the hard work that it takes. There's no secret in this business. I did it without training. I did it without scripts. I literally said how to get in front of a lot of people at once. And I did the work. Every single day, mistakes and all, funny stories and all. They weren't funny at the time, but they're funny today. It wasn't easy, but it was so worth it. Because I tell you what, guys, there is nothing like seeing your reason why in action. When Phil and I, my husband and I, we opened up our first orphanage. Um, we watched all the kids run to their bed for the very first time like they were running into Disney World. They had never seen a bed before, guys. And literally, it was that moment in time that we said it was all worth it. They later called us and said, hey, now we need a home for 100 kids. Are you able to do it and build the first 100 child home through this organization? We're like, we're in, we're on it, let's do it. And we were able to go visit our 117 sons there. Later, there was a need for another home, which just opened this month in June for little girls um, uh, who needed a home. And it just it doesn't just provide them a home. They get housing, education, nutrition, support. And again, we don't just give. We're able to go and be a blessing to other people. And it's all thanks to the power of this incredible profession. So here's the thing, guys. If you quit, who are you quitting on? You're saying no to you, to your dream, to your team, but all of the people who you will bless with your time and your resources, guys. I'm telling you what, don't quit because there is nothing like seeing your reason why in action. Guys, make sure you subscribe. There's so many things. I'm getting ready to 10X this platform, 10X my network marketing business. I'm gonna have a lot of news coming at you, a lot of resources that are gonna totally help you to rock your network marketing business, your generic businesses too. So make sure you subscribe. Again, not my team newsletter. Subscribe to sarahrobbins.com. You're gonna see a free offer for my keynote talk, demystifying the build, big build, entering your name and email. If you're on my list, shout out below and say, I love her stuff. You will know I don't spam anybody. I don't do affiliate marketing, so you're not going to get other people's stuff to your inbox. I don't sell anything. I don't promote anything from the beginning. This is what I'm going to talk about next week, how I built a generic brand without money on the mind. No money on the mind. I did it for free, and I continue to do stuff like this for free every single week because I believe a gift isn't a gift until you give it away. It's something God gave me, so I'm free to share it with all of you. But I tell you what, you'll notice in your inbox, it's nothing but value. Things to help you grow as a leader, to grow your network marketing business. And there's going to be exciting things coming your way. So stay tuned and make sure you tune in next week when we're going to talk about how I rocked it part two. How I built very successful brand, generic brand, and businesses 
And um, I'm going to tell you some fun stories then too. So I hope you guys liked today. Did you like it? Give me a shout out. Share your takeaways below. Make sure you click the share button and share this on your team pages because I'm telling you what your teams need to be encouraged. Remember, the number one thing that got me started besides hunger, hope, hustle, heart, one of the top things was hearing other stories of leaders who rocked it, the obstacles they overcame, and it was that encouragement to know that I could do it too. I hope this blessed you guys. You certainly blessed me on a regular occasion. I hope you guys have a great day, guys. God bless. Goodbye for now. And rock on, rock stars. We will see you next week.